I'm Doug Payne. I'm here uh, at Rolex with Clayton Fredericks, and um, Clayton has a horse. What is your horse's name? Uh, be my guest. Be my guest, and he goes tomorrow, right? Yes, yeah, she goes. She tomorrow. goes tomorrow. Just uh, eleven, about eleven thirty-five. Yeah. So. Yeah. And what are your odds of winning this thing? Have, having been here before and and taken home the Rolex, what do you what do you think? Um, well, I don't know. I think I, I, I probably felt. Or I do feel that I've got a fairly good chance. The mare was third in uh, Burley last year. Um, she was also fifth at Fontainebleau. I think, um, yeah, it's a long way and an expensive journey. So I hope I go home with a little bit of <laughs> prize money yeah. to help help out. Um, yeah, she's a good mare. She's travelled really well, feeling good. So, you know, but um, there's a lot to do. Let's That's been perfect. And you've been uh, you've been certainly using Eco Gold pads now for for how long? At this point, um, I think we first started them maybe two years ago, maybe even three. Actually, uh, time goes pretty quick. But um, yeah, we we love them. They they work really well, and uh, you know they're non-slip and um, give such good support uh, for the saddles and f uh, for the horses backs well see <coughs> so, you know certainly here in the US market they're uh, they're becoming you know per what is that word pervasive um, in the UK market are they they taking hold at this point and, uh, and then you guys also have a attack business yourself so um, yeah well in... um, you know our biggest market for us is in Australia with the Southern Star Saddlery and uh, I know down there because of the uh, you know the um, cooling uh, and the heat that, that we have in Australia and um, the eco, eco gold are just so good in those hot um, climates you know so uh, that's been really good and I always always wanted to have a cross-country pad that um, was basically shaped to the saddle and uh, they fit our Southern Star saddles really well yeah sure um, so that's good and uh, you know they they're just breathable and uh, allow wick the sweat away from the horses so they're brilliant for the cross-country um, yeah really no, that's like. perfect yeah I mean I, I'm certainly a big fan of them so um, as for other things what um, in, in your past in your career that you've had at least up until this point what do you feel is your your strongest horse that you've had in the past and uh, can you tell me a little more about them um, well, without doubt, uh, the former winner here uh, from 2007, been a long time, has probably been my best horse to date. Um, you know, with uh, being having a silver medal from the WEG and bronze team medal in the WEG, um, also you know, silver at the Olympics, it's, uh, won the World Cup twice, and. Uh, Rolex here and some Muir and the list goes on and on and on. He's so, just won so much for me. What sort of qualities did, did he have that, that set him apart from all the others? Actually, when I think about it, the thing that he had was uh, that little bit of special... Um, he had the special character, you know, the thing that when he went into the dressage arena, he just had that look at me, um, floating movement and, uh, you know, people sat up and noticed him. When um, he went out on the cross country, he, you know, he just had that attitude to, to win. And um, then on the final day of the cross country, uh, sorry, final day of the show jumping, you know, he'd go into the arena and he'd just lift. Um, yeah. And uh, he was a competitive horse that really knew what his job was and uh, knew how to turn it on in the ring. Sometimes he would be a little tricky uh, with his flamboyant character, but. Um, managed to get a handle on that yeah no that's perfect and uh, you know you've had much success with that um, what would be the biggest challenge you think that you've had with your career up until this point uh, the biggest challenge of an event is career is managing to keep owners wife uh, family horses all happy yep. <laughs> yeah, how, how, does, how does that work if you beat your wife uh, well it has its moments you know it can be a bit <laughs> tricky but um, yeah, you know, look, both Lucinda and I are quite keen competitors and uh, always want to be winning, so, you know, it can it can be tricky. But, um, yeah, if you can balance all that, you know, it's important really to try... I I've always found, you know, being an Australian living in the UK, it's not always that easy to get owners to be involved, you know, and put money in, in, into to the sport, you know. 
when you're dealing in your own country, you know, people can it really see, yeah. yeah, can really see, you know, why they want to be behind you to go to the Olympics. But, you know, it, so the what, Australians what it, find it hard because I'm away from yeah, there. Sure. The Brits find it hard because they, uh, you know, they should be really supporting the British riders. So, so what, what have you been able to do? What, what strategies have you, you come up with that, that um, seem to be successful? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, Lucinda and I probably have taken a lot of gambles on owning our own horses or sharing them or part, you know, trying to find uh, syndicate owners. Um, I'm a bit surprised, to be honest, at the moment. Be my guest is uh, I lease her from from the uh, the, uh, the German owners, but okay. um, wanted to really get someone to come in into a syndicate, and I, it's just struggled that struggled a little bit at the moment, you know, yeah, with sure, the sure. economy the way it is, I suppose. But um, yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that I haven't got a real owner for for her. But uh, yeah, I think you know times are a bit tough at the moment. Just have to cut down on your expenses a yeah, little sure, bit and sure. do what you can. So when it comes down to the competition itself, how do you prepare yourself mentally for for competing? Um, well, I, to be honest, I'll probably, for this competition and most times I try to get myself away from the crowds and the trade stand area. And and doing the, doing just the, this? And doing exactly this <laughs> and, and just... Um, Really find a quiet spot to sit down and probably do a bit of meditation and you know go through in my mind, visualize what what I want to do and come out and try and do it. Do you get nervous? Ah, uh, yeah, I think everyone gets nervous. If you didn't get nervous, you wouldn't have a heartbeat, really. But uh, yeah, I do. I do get nervous, and I think the um, meditation is very good for settling the nerves and, and getting you focused on what you have to do. Gotcha, gotcha. And then, what do you feel is your uh, the biggest thing you've you've picked up in the, the past five years or so? I think that um, you know, there's no substitute for for the hard work when it comes to and the and and that goes you know the whole year and. You have to really look at this sport in a holistic sense, where every part of your performance, whether it be the feeding of the horse, the shoeing of the horse, you know, um, to what competition equipment that you use, um, you have to look at everything, and uh, the whole thing is what makes the package to do well. And um, yeah, it's uh, just really have to keep an open mind when it comes to the competitions because things are always changing. Um, for example, I was expecting nice sunny uh, Kentucky weather, you know. Well, we got sunshine today, today, yeah. It is today. But yeah, the, last, uh, uh, obviously, the, the last week here has not been uh, anything but that. The typhoons, you know, uh, you, you don't call them twi twisters. Yeah, the, the tornado. They tornado tornado warnings, yeah. yeah. They, uh, they, they've thrown us a little bit, so... Yeah. Um, but, you know, you have to be prepared for all these different things that change and, uh, you know, be prepared for the change and get on with it, really. So outside of writing, do you, do you read a lot or watch movies or anything like that? Um, no, I, I like to... Uh, well, at the moment I've been riding my new, uh, newly acquired Harley Davidson that I won at the first competition. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> but it's, uh, I've got to go and get my uh, bike license for that because it's quite hot, heavy... Uh, CC, so um, yeah, because it's a so bit. You've been, you've been riding around the farm, or it's what? A bit overkill. We've got one long driveway from the house to the stables, so it's sort of a bit, o a bit overkill going up and down. And what, uh, what do the girls think of that? Well, it's well, they don't mind it because it's got a great muffler system on it, and they can hear when I'm coming. So, <laughs> got, fair, got fair, fair warning, bosses on the on the way. They know know when the attack the horse. And you get you get listened on the back of it yet. Um, I have, but it hasn't got the uh, hasn't got the right seat on the back, so it's very difficult. So for that me. was only stationary, or uh, was it moving? No, that was moving, but she had. To, well, the good part is they have to hang on tight. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what, what do you think? Uh, you know, going back to eventing, the the best part about eventing, um, or or maybe even something that that you see sort of a trend happening, or or what do you think that the riders coming up these uh, you know up the ranks these days? What what do they need to know to to be successful? Um, well, you know, obviously the sport has changed and has developed o over the years, and uh, actually, I think um, the you know a lot. I, I hear very regularly that um, people say that the horsemanship has been diminished because of we don't have the steeplechase and all the rest of it. And actually, I don't. 
don't 100% agree with that. I think uh, there is no substitute for having a very, very fit horse. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's changed, but um, the horsemanship skills are very much there. In fact, uh, because we do the three phases, um, you know, you have to, again, just focus on making sure that the horses are really fit and really ready before you, you go out and do this sport. And uh, that in itself means that you have to have pretty good horsemanship skills. Yeah, sure. Did you see yourself doing this growing up? Um, or see yourself in this position? <laughs> yeah, I, well, look, you know, everyone's dream is to ride for their country and ride at the Olympics. Um, I was no different to, to, to most, most kids, you know, they dream of... Uh, Winning a medal and and uh, you know win, or winning a gold medal really. Um, I only managed a silver at the last Olympics, so it's obviously inadequate. Yeah, it's not good enough. <laughs> so yeah, we. I think I've got at least two um, two Olympics left in me. So the important thing is to put together the team of horses because it's very difficult to do this sport with just one. It can be done, but it's very yeah. difficult. Um, so you really need a good base of horses, and I'm very lucky at the moment. I do have uh, some lovely horses going, and uh, if how, I how many go, how many horses do you have going now? Um, well, there's, I've probably got 12 competing, but the reality is I've got five uh, good horses at the three four-star level. Um, so I'm hoping to have five horses qualified for the for Olympics for yeah. London. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Well, hey, best of luck this weekend, and Thank uh, thanks for joining us, and no we'll Pleasure. see you around soon.